Um, yeah, um, welcome to our session about uh, Google Summer of Code 2018. Um, Freifunk has been there as an organization as in the last five, six, seven years, I don't know exactly. And uh, we've got accepted and had a lot of projects and students. And uh, today we just uh, show two of the uh, projects here. And uh, first of all, for people who don't know what is uh, GSOC about, GSOC means uh, Google Summer of Code. Uh, it's a, a program uh, from Google. They have it once a year in summer, <laughs> uh, in Northern America summer, I, I guess. Um, and Google wants wants to say uh, thank you to all the uh, open source organizations uh, where they use software from. Uh, they use a lot, lot of open source software there. And uh, so they initiated uh, this program to uh, just give some money to them and help them to find uh, new contributors. And it's in general about uh, three months of coding time in uh, in summer it's from may to august it changes uh, from year to year a bit and it's for students only there are some uh, there are always some conflicts uh, because of uh, when they have exams and uh, when they have to study and uh, mostly it fits best for students in in america or in asia and uh, german students uh, have uh, often problems uh, because uh, their schedule doesn't fit to the uh, google summer of code uh, schedule um, there are some numbers. Uh, this year we had about, uh, or not we, uh, Google Summer of Code had about uh, 1,500 students. That means uh, it were about uh, it were 1,500 projects in about 300 uh, organizations. They got accepted, and uh, Freifunk was uh, one of uh, these organizations. Um, more than 2,000 mentors is were, have been assigned to the project, so. Uh, the goal is to have um, more, usually to have more than one mentor per, per project uh, to have uh, some, uh, some fallback. If uh, some, something happens, uh, another me uh, mentor can uh, take uh, the project over. And uh, the support of Google is in form of money. Uh, you, uh, every student gets about 5,500 US dollar. Uh, for coding uh, three months in the summer. If they succeed with their project, uh, there are some evaluations within the project. Uh, so if uh, the student fails or if a uh, student uh, don't do the work we accept uh, from them, uh, they won't get uh, the money. And for every mentor, of the organization gets additional $500 uh, to support travel costs and so on for the mentors. Um, Freifunk at Google Summer of Code was uh, very successful for Freifunk uh, this year because um, we had uh, 14 uh, accepted projects. Uh, it was the highest number we ever had uh, in uh, participating Google Summer of Code. Um, we had 12 successful projects. Unfortunately, two mentors, uh, uh, two students uh, failed with their projects. One uh, didn't even start the project. Another one we had to fail because there was no work uh, from the student. And we had about uh, 20 mentors in our uh, group. Um, Freifunk uh, not only covers uh, Freifunk communities, uh, it's an umbrella organization that includes a lot of wireless community networks in uh, other countries. There is VLAN Slovenia, there is Ninox from Italy, we have Guifi from uh, from Spain. Uh, there are developers from OpenWRT to develop firmware or drivers or kernel extensions or network protocols we all use in our in our projects and um, so it's not just uh, Freifunk, it's a lot uh, more things uh, happening there and we just act as the big organization to hold everything together. This is uh, just a list of uh, projects. It's, uh, it's the first half of the list. Um, I don't uh, read all the points now uh, because it continues. 
and uh, we have a lot of blog posts in our uh, Freifunk blog about every single project there. Uh, there are, th uh, I think, three blog posts per project. So if you're interested, uh, just uh, read uh, about our projects. And uh, we have two mentors here. It's uh, Moritz. Uh, he mentored um, one of the uh, projects and Benjamin will, is still preparing the slides and <laughs> he will come up later. And uh, this year it's the first time the mentors present the projects. Last year we had, uh, had have some students here uh, to talk about uh, their own projects and uh, it's a new thing we have. <laughs> so, uh, welcome Moritz. Uh, Do you have my slides? I guess I have your slides. Uh, you have to unmute your microphone. Uh, press the button. Oh. Test, tons. Hello, hello. Yeah. Oh, it's working. Great. Okay, let's me let me untangle some wires here. And and your slides are working too. So yeah, even greater. Yeah. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, before I start, I want just want to say, if you're a student and you have an idea that might fit in the Freifunk context, it doesn't matter where you're from, uh, from Europe or from other countries, uh, and you have an I idea that might fit into the Freifunk realm in some way, um, please come forward, write, write an email. Um, we, might uh, we might be able to find a mentor for you and um, can keep you going. So you don't have to select from the website any specific topic, uh, just um, um, come forward with your own idea or search the website you might get some inspiration from previous projects uh, just have a look around feel free to to ask us afterwards yeah we also have a website projects.freifunk.net um, where we uh, just collect a bunch of ideas um, and you can get in touch with the mentors then mm -hmm. yeah it's, it's quite good if there's a google sum of code if instead of flipping burger burgers in your free spare time uh, in university uh, in the summertime you can Earn some money, have fun uh, working on projects, uh, and um, yeah, it also looks uh, great on the CV, I guess. Okay, um, yeah, um, I had an idea once, um, and um, yeah, where does it? S where do I start? Yeah, I had an idea uh, because in the f this Freifu community we have a problem. Uh, that is uh, local content. I mean, if you know Freifunk, you might know, but for those who don't, um, Freifunk networks are mostly used for internet access, but Freifunk isn't really, uh, um, doesn't want to be a hotspot provider. Internet is more like a service on, on the network, on the uh, decentralized infrastructure that Freifunk tries to build, but uh, everybody who just wants to use Facebook. Okay, it, may, it might be a bit exaggerated, this way but uh, if uh, people say when you don't can't access uh, the internet over the Freifunk network then Freifunk is broken this is shit sorry um, and um, so many communities started to you know, set up local game servers file servers whatever uh, webcams uh, for of bird, birds nests stuff like that but uh, the premise is uh, I mean, the, the result is you can't compete with the content on the internet. The cat pictures on the internet are going to be always better than the pictures of your ca of your cat. Sorry about that. Um, so uh, I thought, okay, what can can we use this Freifunk network for? I mean, if not for accessing the internet. And I thought, okay, maybe we can use it as a telephone network. So we can uh, like. Uh, put up some routers, some Freifunk routers, and then use this mesh network cloud as a telephone network. Might work good, for example, in disaster areas. Or, yeah, just for fun. I mean, in, in Germany, we don't really have disasters like earthquakes or volcanoes. I mean, okay, in the Eiffel, a volcano, but it's long, long time ago. Um, anyway, um, yeah, so I thought, okay, does, is there uh, some app that can enable us to, to uh, use the uh, Freifunk network as a telephone network without internet, without any immediate server, maybe even with, without uh, IPv4? And uh, I did some research and I didn't find anything because if you don't have a central server, you, it's very hard to monetize on it. But we don't want to monetize on it. But even then, uh, um, it I wasn't able to find such a project, so I thought, okay, uh, let's submit it uh, as an idea. Maybe some mentor and some uh, some student will find each other. 
So yeah, I did that and I forgot about it uh, last year. And then uh, Andreas uh, like sent me an email or something like that. Uh, Congratulations, you are a mentor. Oh. Damn it, what I've gotten into. Uh, so I had to read up uh, what this uh, Google Summer of Code uh, is about. And um, then there were students uh, like emailing me for the project. And I was, OK, uh, who, who, what, uh, what student to choose? Uh, I think there were around uh, four, four students, maybe five. It's hard to count um, um, because uh, somebody was just trying to, yeah, uh, what I have a question here and there, but uh, I think only four were like uh, pr more persistence. It's very good to, to contact uh, your possible mentor early on. Yeah, anyway, um, yeah, in the end, uh, we selected uh, a student, and uh, the student is uh, Daniel, and uh, he chose uh, this app uh, to, to make a local f uh, phone uh, app, and uh, he called it Messenger, like uh, Messenger, but how they speak it uh, in, in, the, uh, in the south of Germany. Anyway, OK. So uh, I think I've already told you about uh, what tr problem we try to, to, to solve. I mean, cat pictures doesn't work uh, on local networks. Um, yeah, this is basically the problem. Um, OK, so I will just skip to the next slide. OK, we have this local phone app. and. OK, I no, wouldn't stand here if it would uh, be a failed pro project, maybe. Yeah, maybe maybe I would still. But anyway, um, yeah, we have now this app. It's an Android store. Um, in the, sorry, in the F-Droid store. So it's, it's free. It's open source. Everyone can download it. It works. You can use it on your local network, like at home, at, uh, at your, your company, uh, or of course, in the Firefox network. Um, it works in the local broadcast domain only. It uses uh, IPv6. Uh, WebRTC for uh, encoding audio and video. And um, yeah, it doesn't need internet, no DHCP uh, server. So that is great. Uh, it uses IPv6 link local addresses for those who know. Um, so it's what, what you basically do with this app, uh, let me show it, is uh, you open it, you scan a QR code, which basically uh, contains uh, the IPv6 link local address. And then you just have some contact list and you click it and the other phone will, will start to ring. So it's a pretty simple idea, but the thing is uh, it wasn't um, available before. So now it is, and that's great. So yeah, that was the project, and I'm very happy how it turned out. And uh, maybe there are some other people who would just want to copy the code for some other app to improve on it, to, to use the idea, I don't know. Uh, it wasn't meant to compete with uh, WhatsApp, for example, but um, to be in uh, a demo for s this thing that uh, this is possible and it's a nice feature to have. M maybe some other more popular messengers want to integrate this feature. But anyway, you can use it uh, from the F-Droid store. It's free, open source. Uh, just use it in your local home to, I don't know, I mean, for example, you can take two to, to phones and then watch your back or something like that. I don't know. Um, yeah, so that's great. So thank you. That uh, was the project. And uh, if anybody wants to uh, try it here on the Congress, it might work be working here. Feel free. Uh, ask me afterwards, and we can have a phone call. I mean, OK, maybe not a phone call, or like talk to each other. OK, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, our uh, next, you have your own laptop.
Hello. Ah, it's better. Um, so hello, my name is Benjamin uh, Henryon. I come from Belgium. Uh, it's been the second year um, I've been mentoring a student f uh, under Fryfoon Google Summer of Code. Um, I was joined the startup back in 2015, which was trying to do to use multipass TCP. Um, that was created at my university, uh, UCL in Belgium. And multipass TCP uh, is uh, basically a change in the network stack of Linux so that you can use uh, multiple, let's say, internet connections together and benefit from the bandwidth of both. Um, so the his story is that the company failed, they raised some money, uh, but I um, got some public funding for uh, doing an OpenWRT uh, router uh, where you could combine two internet connections from two different providers, install some uh, cloud uh, server, and then uh, benefit from the double bandwidth of the those two internet connections. Um, at the time, so multipass TCP is uh, TCP only, um, and at the time we used an OpenVPN TCP tunnel, um, so that when let's say local uh, traffic from the local LAN arrive on the router, uh, there is an OpenVPN traffic there, and multipass TCP is basically taking the um, open VPN TCP uh, and encapsulating TCP in TCP and when you search on the internet for TCP in TCP the first thi the first page that pops up is don't do that <laughs> um, ba basically once you have a bit of packet loss on on one of the lines you have the congestion algorithm of TCP that basically works uh, on on each other and the performance is seriously uh, degraded um, so I basically uh, resubmit this uh, project as Google Summer of Code, and one student from Hungary, uh, Ferenc, applied for it, and he already worked on multipass uh, UDP uh, during his research uh, at the university, uh, wh while being a student, not a PhD student, and now he's uh, continuing in uh, as a PhD, following on uh, multipass TCP and. Uh, uh, yeah, basically in this direction. Um, so one thing, one topology we we wanted to address for Freifunk uh, is this, um, and that's basically the result of the first year uh, last last year. So l last year in 2017, we focused on that one, where uh, he had two laptops, uh, one OpenWRT router on each side, and four bridges on the two different frequencies and the goal was to show that uh, um, a lap two laptops which don't have multipass TCP uh, can talk to each other and benefit from the double of the bandwidth. Um, so we successfully demonstrated uh, that setup for I think uh, the router we used were like uh, Netgear 4800 uh, running OpenWRT and we showed 80 megabits, um, so f two times 40 megabits, um, but we reached a limitation on on the the sense that uh, this limitation um, was uh, basically CPU bound. So the the way we set it up was to use instead of using OpenVPN uh, TCP, we used uh, Shadow Socks which is used by the people who wants to uh, go around the firewall of uh, uh, China. And uh, Shadow Sox is like, uh, it intercepts the, the, the TCP traffic and create a TCP tunnel, so you don't have this TCP in TCP encapsulation. Um, so we had like three minutes uh, l last year when we went to California to show that to all uh, Google Summer of Code. Um, so I presented that slide in the first minute and in the second minute, if I manage to go back, uh, we present the, dem the video, uh, yeah, here. So the video is showing, I think, two times 20 megabit. Um, if he wants to start, 
Ja. Uh, so here we show basically that between the, on the topology we have an IPerf server on one side, an IPerf client, and we get uh, 40 megabit combined. Uh, and that's that's one of the routers, and he's gonna uh, remove one of the cables, and it should go down to 20. I think there's a problem with uh, the playing of the video. So it's cutting one of the links, and you quickly see that it's going down to 20. So the uh, traffic is only going via one one link. And when he's going to put back the the cable again, it takes a bit of uh, 30 seconds to get back to 40 megabits. Yeah, it, they get some DHCP uh, uh, IP address. And then it's going back to 40. So, um, so we got that set up. Uh, it was working, that's based on Shadow Socks, but the limitation we got was uh, Shadow Socks is, was sticking to one uh, CPU core, while we wanted at least for this one to, it, I think it had two CPU cores, we wanted to use uh, two CPU cores, and at some point after the project was ended, we find an option in Shadow Socks that it could use the, on Raspberry Pi, we tested with four CPU cores, so we got a little bit more speed. But still, uh, we saw this a uh, lot of uh, context switching between user space and camera space. And for 2018, I said, uh, we need to research if there is a better way to find uh, more something which is more kernel space and which does the same. Um, so we did uh, some research. I did some research uh, originally. Yeah, thank you for the advertisement. But uh, let's go back. Um, so yeah, the w what I found was a kernel module called uh, KSB. So KSB is a kernel SOX bouncer, so it, it was uh, doing this work of uh, taking the TCP traffic, putting into a, um, a SOX proxy tunnel um, in kernel space, but the problem is it was an for an old 2.6, and we tried to port, to make that run on a recent kernel, it didn't really work out because it was too old and we had to do a uh, lot of work. Uh, so we researched um, different options and I think the last week of, or the two last weeks of the, the in August, we finally find out um, something called eBPF. So eBPF is um, some new uh, engine which extends or replaces IP tables so that you can programmatically uh, uh, take some packets in the Linux kernel and do some uh, more advanced things with it. And there is an implementation called SOC, SOC map, which is doing this work of doing this SOCs tunneling. Um, so uh, with SOCs map, um, we found So this is the same setup as before, but this is with QMU instead of uh, of uh, real uh, OpenWRT routers. Uh, so we, what we did, we in 2017 we forked uh, Shadow Socks uh, to add the d to add to remove the encryption feature, and the main author of Shadow Socks refused our patches because he said, no, we focus on encryption, we wanted to have it secure, blah blah blah. But we said we focus on performance and we want to disable the encryption. So at the end, we made our own fork called Shadow Socks No Crypto. And this year, we added an extension uh, for eBPF, uh, where we ended up um, with uh, some serious performance uh, upgrade. So this eBPF is, I think, available stably on uh, 4.14. But there were we find a real some bug. Um, but at the end, we could at least uh, run in this QMU setup, we without the eBPF patches, we could reach 152 megabits. Uh, but with the eBPF 
uh, patches we could get like around 400 megabits so it was uh, more than double improvement of uh, in terms of speed um, but the the we found a bug if we were doing a, a NFTP transfer some bits and bytes were lost in the process and we actually found uh, we filed a bug to the Cilium guy. So Cilium is a group which is doing this SOC map uh, extension. And I, th I think yesterday when I talked to the student, uh, there is a GitHub issue filed on this. And but I think it's not resolved yet. So the next uh, work is actually to get this properly packaged in OpenWRT, uh, and that's going to be maybe for next year or. Uh, when I have time, I just try it out, make a package, and and see. Um, one thing we also looked at was to make an open WRT because it's a, ca a special kernel. So we wanted to make a special kernel uh, uh, open WRT package so that you could just do a OPKG install my multipass TCP kernel, and you would get a another kernel. Um, so yeah, that's pretty it. If you have any questions. Uh Okay, thank you very much. Uh, any questions to Moritz, to Benjamin? Ah. What, what does eBPF even mean? <laughs> e extended uh, something packet filter. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, um, so thank you very much. If you have any ideas for uh, Google Summer of Code and Freifunk, uh, just uh, talk to me, visit uh, projects.freifunk.net um, or talk to anyone else. <laughs>